constant battle going on within each of us between the voice in our head and the voice in our heart. The voice in our head keeps us within the comfort zone, cozy, safe, cautious, while the voice in our heart propels us to step out of comfort zone, brushy, spontaneous, bold. Twelve years ago, I found myself in a situation when life demanded an immediate action from me, while the voice in my head was telling me, let someone else do it, you better wait. The voice in my heart was telling me the exact opposite. If it is not you, who? If it is not now, when? It was a pivotal moment in my life when I was able to break the shackle and step out freely. Friends, it was because I listened to the little voice inside a calling from my heart. It was in the year 2009 when while visiting a school called Parizat Academy, I met a young visitor from America. I was there to meet my friend Uttam who founded that school in his remote village where children had no access to education. I was a board member of a nonprofit based here in Texas and we were supporting the school by raising money for teacher salary and meals and boarding expenses of some of the poorest students. I also helped Uttam to create the website of the school. As the school became well known, student interns from abroad began visiting the school. And thus in the summer of 2009, I met Daudzi Kelly. When I asked her why she chose to travel all the way from Baltimore to India instead of spending her time in summer at home earning some extra income, she replied, the answer is clear to me. I chose a rural environment because I wanted to fully experience the struggle faced by these children. And I'm passionate about children's education. When I heard the story of her, a 19 year old who traveled all the way to India, paying the airfare from her own pocket to teach children in India whom she never met. I was dumbfounded. That afternoon, there was a meeting in the school about the challenges faced by these visiting international interns. There was no proper facility for them. They were staying in makeshift accommodation without running water and electricity. Can there be a permanent structure, a guest house for them where they can stay comfortably? Uttam asked. Everyone applauded, but then we came to realize the elephant in the room, how to raise fund for the guest house. Since I had been leading the fundraising effort for the school in US, Everyone was looking towards me. But the voice in my head was telling me the school guest house construction requires tens of thousands of dollars. Do not get into it. Let someone else do it. As I stood at the crossroad, I looked into the audience. There was Tauji Kali adorned 
by cheering students. A 19 year old who traveled tens of thousands of miles to India, to an unknown country, unfamiliar people, unaccustomed summer heat. She's a brave girl who was able to break all the barriers of culture, language, geography, which separated us. She brought so much joy to this, these children. Yet, we are not able to provide her with the basic necessities, water, electricity, shelter. You must act. My heart was telling me, if it is not you, who? If it is not now, when? Friends, it was the moment when my heart went over my head and I declared, no matter what, we will build the school, guest house, and do everything for the completion of it. When I returned to the US, I, along with few others, began the fundraising campaign. Our community helped us, supported us wholeheartedly. But after six months of intense campaigning, the fundraising came to a standstill. We were halfway to the target. We still needed money, tens of thousands of dollars. We realized that we needed to go out of our community and reach to other nonprofit and corporate world. None of us had any such experience, but it was the need of the hour. Someone must explore and find out. And who was that going to be? Friends, I again found myself at the crossroad. Could I spend the time, energy, effort, But then I listen to my heart. If it is not you, who? If it is not now, when? Thus, I begin researching on funding opportunities provided by private corporate government agencies. During that time, I was working at Microsoft. Microsoft had a unique program whereby every employee working for a nonprofit could earn $17 per hour for that nonprofit. Over a course of a year, I spent hundreds of hours raising uh, running for a charity marathon, creating the school's website, conducting meetings running the campaign for the school guest house, I decided to apply for those hours. Approximately in three months, I received a long distance call from Woodtown. Brother, the guest house construction has started. Someone from Microsoft donated the rest of the money turn of events rendered me speechless. I just realized Microsoft Human Resource approved all those hours and there was sufficient money for the construction of the guest house. It was so quick, easy, seamless. I felt as if Bill Gates himself had heard me and like a magician. He fulfilled my dream. I marveled at the sheer beauty of the program and the mission and vision of Bill Gates. Friends, there is a constant battle going on within each of us. 
In 12 years ago, when faced with a challenge, I experienced this battle between two opposite forces. The voice, the relentless voice in my head, working hard to discourage me, and the voice in my heart, encouraging me to go for it. If it is not you, who? If it is not now, when? Friends, it was the moment when I listened to the little voice in my heart. I was able to step out from my comfort zone and life surprised me with miracles as I met some special people along the way. A daring, brave girl from Baltimore and a uh, the greatest philanthropist in the world. Friends, in the journey of life, you will also face similar situation like me. Everyone will when the little voice in your heart will ask you, if it is not you, who? If it is not now, when? Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and friends, what will be your answer, Madam Toastmaster?